It's Iron Dad time. Used to be my favorite character. Not quite so anymore, but still a favorite to be sure. Interesting starting choices. Hmm. Okay, well, the left half of the spire looks real nice today. Got Slime Boss as a Rack Boss. Ironclad versus Slime Boss is a pretty interesting matchup. I think with Ironclad's offense heavy playstyle, Slime Boss usually melts with some ease. I think this is either a rare card or a boss relic swap here. I think there's a lot of good boss swaps for the clad. Four energy per turn is definitely juicy on a character that is so energy hungry. So if we get any kind of energy relic, even something nasty like the busted crown or the ectoplasm, the additional energy will definitely help us out a lot. Hello and welcome, Helix. Good to have ya. We just had a wonderful uh, defect run yesterday, too. On the live stream. Glenny says, I really have so much trouble trusting corruption, and I know people say it's OP, I just have no idea how to build around it. I think part of the key for me that uh, helped me start making corruption good is building the damage portion of my deck first. As long as you already have an established damage plan, Corruption usually works out great, because once you run out of cards, all you have left... Once you run out of skills, all you have left are your damage cards. And those should be ending the fight for you at that point, once you draw a full hand of damage cards. After playing free skills for a whole fight, you need the fight to be over. So that means having a a way to deal a lot of damage with the attacks that remain. Anger and a bunch of card draw can be part of this. Uh, you can make it work by going critical with a body slam, I've also really appreciated. Or simply having a, a, a very good damage core to the deck, just a bunch of upgraded powerful attacks. Kind of tempting to choose a rare here, we could remove it at this shop, we'd have to take some unpleasantness in an early couple fights, but uh, choosing a r ironclad rare that we could then upgrade definitely could be a very good start to a run. Could let us start with a feed, for example which would allow us to gain max health from every fight. Could be a Fiend Fire or an Immolate or a Bludgeon, which would let us smash through Act 1. So Curse for a Rare Card is tempting. I'm just not sure it's as good as, say, what we might get from the boss swap. We also don't necessarily have to go this way. Kind of depends on what we get. But yeah, I've, I don't think we've done enough uh, Burning Blood swaps. What do we get? We get us some energy. A Cursed Key is probably one of the better ones, at least this early on. I'm, it's not a busted crown, and I'm happy for that. Gives us a fourth energy per turn, but if we open a non-boss chest, we will obtain a curse. Now, the secret is you don't have to open the chests. You can click skip and simply ignore them. Up says, what does it take for me to choose three random potions as my start? Um, a forced elite on floor six that I can't avoid, and a lack of other options that help with that problem. Just guaranteeing you have two potions to use on a, on a mandatory elite can be a, a really big game changer. Save every hit point here. Drew well enough. Very difficult for Ironclad to draw less than 18 damage in a hand of cards, and with four energy per turn. We can do quite a lot, thanks to Bash Strike Strike. But what about Bash Strike Pommel Strike? With four energy per turn, this is probably one of the best attacks Ironclad has. I think it's just a really good common attack in general, Pommel Strike. It's got the Strike keyword, so it benefits from the Strike Dummy, works with Perfected Strike. It's um, quite efficient for one energy at nine damage. And the upgrade even gives it both plus one damage and plus one card draw, which is better than most upgrades that uh, give you card draw. Usually you get nothing else. So the plus one damage, even though it's minor, is better than you'd usually get. Body Slam can be very fun to build around, but I don't think it adds very well to the Ironclad starting deck. With just four defends, it's going to be at best 10 damage, usually. Unupgraded does take a shrug it off 
or a power through or an impervious before I really feel comfortable with body slam. That or a lot of card draw, which we currently don't have. Doink. Silent needs a stab dummy. I think so. But this turn, it is us who are dummies. This draw doesn't do anything to these lights. And we've only got one block. Oh well. Not even three strikes can kill either of these. Would have had to be four. Oddly enough, the fourth strike actually would have been a better draw than the defend. Oh well. Kleine says, when does Clash actually work? Clash works under a couple of circumstances. If you're playing below Ascension 10 and you have no Ascender's Bane, Clash is actually a very good card. Enemies will also add less status cards to your deck below this point. So on most low Ascension runs, Clash is, is truly fantastic. It's able to dish out a ton of damage for free as long as you can make sure there's only attacks in hand. The other way to make this work is to have decent card manipulation. Oddly enough, a card that works really well with Clash is Warcry, because you can use it to put an unplayable card like Ascender's Bane on top of the deck uh, and play the Clash that's in your hand. Decks with very few skills in general, such as if you've removed two defends or three defends early, um, can make it work as well. But above Ascension 10, it's, it's very powerful at zero cost, but just way too unreliable at its core. I'm taking a True Grit. Give me block and exhaust, please. Exhausting is a really, really powerful mechanic for Ironclad. Simply deleting for the duration of one combat. A strike or a defend can help make sure that you draw better cards on your future turns. It's even possible to assemble infinite combos or specific win conditions using the exhaust mechanic by deleting all but a specific subset of cards in your deck. Uh, for me, my I think the most useful ability of exhaust on Ironclad is the ability to have a 30 or 40 card deck, which includes answers to all of the various fights in the Spire, and use the exhaust mechanic to delete the cards that are not useful for whatever your particular opponent is. This gives Ironclad great flexibility. To, uh, false choice, by the way. Great flexibility during combats. Another Pommel Strike. Actually, pretty tempting. Another True Good as well. There's also On Sale in Flame and Card Removal. I'm thinking either in Flame Card Removal or Pommel Strike in Flame. I definitely want this strength gain. Permanently making our attacks. Well, for the duration of a fight, making our attacks do more damage. Strength is one of the simplest ways to so-called scale up a deck and make it more powerful on subsequent turns. I had no idea that was going to happen. I, I just wanted to take the event. I didn't want to shop here because I didn't have enough money. But we're in a shop now, so here we are. Let's see, we're fighting the slime boss, and I just picked up an inflame. That actually speaks to removing a defend first. Can't buy pummel now that we've bought the inflame, sadly. Otherwise, it might be worth thinking about. Could also buy a potion here. The block potion would be quite reasonable. But I think I'd rather get rid of a starter card. I'm going to try with a defender bubble here. That leaves us with all five of our strikes still. And hilariously, it still lets us block on this turn. Okay. I'm down. Ouch. Two points of strong. Combust. Combust's a little hard to stomach when you don't have any healing. 
but it is a really nice way to kill the slime boss in particular. Five damage to all enemies every turn. Pretty substantial. That said, we've already got the beginnings of a deck that is absolutely going to stomp all over slime boss, so I'm not sure that I need it here. I could consider a Sever Soul does reasonable damage for two energy, which is affordable with the Curse Key. And its deletion of non attack cards can be quite nice. This is also another way, by the way, to make Clash work. Somebody was asking, how do you get Clash to work? The cards Sever Soul and Second Win, which delete all non attack cards in your hand, pair, oddly enough, really well with Clash. Var, thanks for 31 months of support. The boss swap. And we have an elite coming up very imminently, which actually makes this Sever Soul a lot more appealing. So I guess the question is, long term, do I prefer Sever Soul or Combust in this deck? And I think the answer is actually Sever Soul. Let's pick that card up. We have two good potions. I think that means we should proceed directly to the elite fight without taking another combat. We'll take an event instead, maybe getting a heal if we're lucky. Uh, although we can't afford to pay Cleric, so Cleric won't even appear. Uh, there is still the, the donut. Banana. Could eat a banana. Or we could lose health and then rest. Or get a free upgrade. Ooh. Sever Soul upgrade actually pretty good, given that it gets a flat plus six damage, which is definitely better than any of the other attack upgrades. Even the bash. I like Pommel Strike for the additional draw. I like the Inflame for the additional strength. We'll get to upgrade two, so I'm thinking actually our best two are Inflame and Sever Soul for the moment. And then we've got some actually good damage for these three elites. Let's do it. It's time to squish. Sever Soul also lets us get rid of curses, that's true. Gremlin Ob, no problem for this deck, although this draw is awkward, to be sure, making me consider using the Strength Potion so that we can get a little bit more oomph out of this fight, just to make sure we get a nice, clean three-turn kill. We're also exceedingly likely to draw an attack card with the Pummel Strike. So, this damage is unavoidable. We easily kill next turn, though. We get a Peace Pipe, allowing us to remove cards at rest sites. Hmm. Curse Key Peace Pipe. Well, that sounds like curses will be a lot more manageable. Show me a Darkstone Periapt, please. I like both Armaments and Headbutt. Headbutt lets us put a card back on top. I think that's extremely valuable for the entirety of Ironclad's career. But in the early game, just lets you get your upgraded cards on top. Armaments would let us get more upgraded cards. Uh, sort of. By upgrading cards mid-combat. Armaments is better with more card draw, although it might have an interesting interaction with the Peace Pipe by allowing me to spend less upgrades on stuff. Hmm, we'll think about that. But I'll take a headbutt. We'll consider the next armaments, maybe. Question is, do we actually upgrade a card now, or do we begin to toke things already? I actually would not mind losing another strike. Although perhaps I'd rather get the Pummel Strike upgraded now. I'm going to continue to not upgrade Bash. I don't tend to like upgrading Bash these days. Although the Bash upgrade is very useful in Act 1, there's a substantial chance that this this upgrade becomes irrelevant later on if you get your hands on a better vulnerable source, such as an Uppercut or a Shockwave. So I guess my usual answer is don't upgrade Bash, just pick Shockwave. But it can be useful in specific situations, like if you need help against Hexaghost, it can be a really big deal. Absolutely. Alright, I'll up upgrade this, actually. That that can even be better than removing a card if I uh, headbutt it. Very unlikely to open this chest. It is the largest type of chest, meaning it contains either an uncommon or a rare relic. 
But if I want to fight this Burning Elite, I don't think a curse is going to be very acceptable. I could toke it before Slime Boss, so we'd have to get through four combats with a curse. I don't think so. Not this one. For numerous reasons. Bash and two strikes next turn. Okay, so we'll just inflame, I suppose, all true grit. Though I might lose the headbutt. I'm okay with that if I do. Easy. And then this turn we go bulk. This is 37, these are 13. So we can probably kill next turn. It means taking 15 this turn? Probably. Or I could use the attack potion, but I suspect it's going to be more valuable in our next elite fight. This brings you 73 minus 37. It is 36. Can I do 36 next turn? Not always, but I can block for 17. Uh, what would Bash Strike Headbutt be? That's the least base damage. There's some shenanigans we can do otherwise. Um, that would be 11 plus 13 plus 18, which is plenty. That's exactly what we draw. Get Bronze Scales, doing three damage back when we're attacked. Definitely helps uh, a little bit in basically every fight, although not much against Slime Boss. We want a better card with our strength. Twin Strike is here, hitting two times. Piggybacking off our strength two times. I wouldn't call it amazing, but it's takeable. It's also Perfected Strike, which is unlikely to be very good with the Peace Pipe doing some work in this run. Is Spire on the phone any different? Spire on the phone has a different user, slightly different user interface. Um, and some slightly different coding resulting in a different set of bugs than the desktop game has. But for the most part, it's the, the game you know and love. Do we have the damage we need for Hexagos? With four strength, I think we do. Uh, or Slime Boss. We have the damage we need for Slime Boss. Excuse me. We're not fighting Hexagos. I'm gonna skip all these. Can always opt out of the Elite if we feel uncomfortable. I think we're gonna be just fine. Hey yeah. To you too, friend. So just headbutt the True Grit, Pommel Strike, kill him. Not a hit point was lost, and we get a good potion. Okay, we're on track to fight this Burning Elite. No problem, no problem. We're also offered in Flame Clash or Demon Form. Hmm, Demon Form with four energy already, interesting. Not usually a fan of early Demon Form, but it can be a really good long-term scaling solution. Picking this demon form up early gives us an incentive to mostly add survivability to this deck from here. And we'll have a way to beat bosses, like Champ. We take the demon form, we already beat Champ. In Act 2. Also pretty good against the Bronze Automaton. Be very good if we find a Snekawai as well. <laughs> pick that up. Might be a little clunky at times, but that's okay. Ooh, True Grit and Sever Soul kind of competing with each other here. I guess we could use the Blessing of the Forge so that it's not a problem. 22 plus... Yeah. I'll just destroy this demon form. It's not for this fight. What, headbutt the True Grit or headbutt the Sever Soul? Not worried about Slime Boss, right? Okay. So I'll use whatever potions are necessary to win this fight decisively.
If I don't headbutt True Grit, I'm very likely to take damage next turn. But deleting my cards is not even necessarily a good thing. Okay, I'll headbutt this Ever Soul. Lose this. So it'll have 21 health next turn, which means we can put the headbutt here. I was a little afraid of this. Wee bit concerning. With so little health. Don't think the artifact's gonna matter. I think this is the right way. Ah, those draws lined up that we should have targeted this one. This is 25 plus 9, 34 damage. Can't quite kill the front one unless I use attack potion here. So it looks like we'll go to 4 health. Keep the attack potion. Uncomfortable, but I'll allow it. It's a little dire. We do get a Centennial Puzzle draw when we take damage. We do get offered a Perfected Strike. I don't think we want that. Trencher Berserk? Probably not either. We're hoping for a heal next floor. Although, uh, the Gremlin could decide to kill me. That could always happen. We do get the Green Key. We do at least have a lot of money now. But can I survive not just one, but two combats? The answer is actually, so far, yes. Yes, I can. Actually, this one was really easy, even. Get him. Get another potion. Combust, cleave, or evolve. Evolve is kind of nice for slime boss. Feels unnecessary, though. How about cleave? I don't have any area damage. It's really good with strength. Yes. Take a cleave. Alright, one more fight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, that looks pretty spooky, I'll tell you what. Uh, how do I get out of this? Hmm. Attack Potion Immolate would do it. Or Whirlwind. It also pummel strike, draw into block cards, and use the speed potion. Can't get a reaper off the attack potion. That'd be pretty cool, though, if you could. Chemo also draws cards. And kills one. There's a few attacks that would just kill one of them. Of course, we need to solve all three here. I think the highest chance to survive this floor is to use the attack potion right now. So I'm going to do that. There it is. Chemo draws cards. Go down to two health. Draw three cards off Centennial Puzzle. I think we probably should do that. It also kills one, right? Killing the eight damage one. Would be the choice here. Oh, and there's the block cards. <clears throat> All right, no further expenditure required. We have enough block to block completely. And I can damage them. Easy peasy. Can't quite kill. Just wondering if it's beneficial to draw or not. I don't think so. So we'll guarantee be able to kill them both if I just block like so. All right, we made it to the rest site. We're offered pretty mediocre stuff. 
And we get to choose rest or upgrade prior to slime boss. Quite frankly, upgrade could be the right choice here. Or remove, yeah, actually remove could be the right choice to make sure we draw the demon form earlier. Not gonna take any of these cards. So, if we rest, then post-split, we have a better chance of not immediately dying. If we upgrade or remove, we have a better chance of clearing the fight perfectly, but we have to clear the fight perfectly to win. HR Homer says, have I ever upgraded with one HP before a boss? I'm quite sure that I've done that at least one time, and we won. Easy red key. <laughs> So, I, upgrades that I could see being good here would be Demon Form, Bash, Cleave. Or I remove probably one Strike. Not before Slime Boss, I don't want to do that. How many times have I perfected a boss after resting? Also quite a few times. Pretty hard for us to fail to split here. Really all depends on when we draw the demon form. I guess the, the only real question we need to ask ourselves is what choice gives us the highest chance to win this fight? I think our odds are probably better if I rest. Put us to 24 HP, gives us the ability to survive one slime hit so we can actually use the Centennial Puzzle. That seems kind of important. And I have a schnooze. Just ultimately can't quite justify, although if I'd known we were going to draw a demon form turn one, I might have decided to upgrade it. Uh, do I want a pummel strike here? I actually don't think that I do. I think I should demon form in regular strike. But I don't accidentally draw the inflame or bash and be unable to play them. Precisely. Looks like pretty good draws, though. Looks like extremely good draws. Uh, what do I want? Bash on top or Pummel Strike? Gonna have nine strength. And they only have 29 health. Just give me the Pummel Strike. And yes, we're about to perfect the fight quite decisively. Easy peasy. Alright, well, can I go back in time and upgrade? Truth is, we still have more health going into Act 2 for having rested. Although it's not a huge amount of additional health. It is still more health. So it's not like we have nothing for the choice we made. We, we do get to keep some of that HP. We also have maybe a double tap here. Double tap Pummel Strike, double tap Cleave, not too bad. Otherwise, I could take or leave these rare cards. What would, made, would have made, what would have made me confident about taking that fight with two health? A bag of preparation or a swift potion. Anything that would let me guarantee more draws on turn one. Just a couple more, and I would have been confident in it. <clears throat> yeah, if we get a Sneko Eye, Bludgeon's pretty good. Bludgeon is pretty crap scaling with strength, though. Double Tap will be good with Sneko anyway, if, if that happens. I'll take a Double Tap here. Let's see if that ends up being any good. And we don't, in fact, get a Sneko Eye. We get offered some tough choices here between Sozu, preventing us from gaining potions, Tiny House, instead of giving us energy, gives us just a bunch of stuff, a potion, max health, some money, card reward, or Velvet Choker, limiting us to six cards per turn. You know, currently the deck doesn't want to play more than six cards per turn. And if any card says Velvet Choker, it's demon form. This is so much value for one card play. We don't have any of the exhaust synergy that would lead me to really being afraid of Velvet Choker, and even if we end up doing that, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. 
Yeah, I think I think Velvet Choker can be very, very good on the Ironclad. Ironclad has has many ways to generate just a huge amount of value out of a few card plays. Let's take it. Let's take that Velvet Choker quite happily. It's a little awkward with the double tap. Mostly that just means I won't be upgrading our double tap. Wow, how many elites do I want to fight? Hmm. Could go this way and get a rest site right after the chest. Hmm. Definitely going to want to focus on getting rid of our starter cards now. Not sure if we want fights or events. Hmm. I'm thinking something like this. Could go this way, but probably more like this way. We get one, two, four rest sites. Including this one. So we could remove up to four times with a peace pipe, plus once from the shop. Five removals this act. Or potentially upgrade a key card of some kind. And indeed, the deck already beats champ, so long as we figure out how to block. Currently, we can't do that very well. Uh, I think it might involve upgrading True Grit and or taking a Shrug It Off or something. So we'll have to keep an eye out for good blocks as we progress through the act. Um, let's do two Act 2 Easy Pools before the shop. Get a bit more money for this, too. Also go this way. Is that better? It's the same arrangement. That puts the elite right after the chest, though, which means we can't open the chest. Right, that's why I avoided that. Okay, this way. Ouch. Right. My hit points. Power through would be pretty good since we have Sever Soul. Yeah. Uh, I think Demon Form's too slow in this fight. We need to kill as quickly as possible. So how much damage do we do with Bash, Double Tap, Headbutt, then Strike? That would be... 11 plus 18 by 2 plus 13. 11 plus 36 plus 13 is a flat 60, which is not quite enough. We're three short. Okay. Well, then we go def bash, defend, defend, true grit, obviously. Get that vulnerable down. Or maybe it's double tap bash. Do I need it to be double tap bash? I'll have a lot of energy next turn. This would deal 13, 13, 37. That's enough. Okay. And we have the thorns damage too. That's right. Even though it heals one. Okay, not that bad a fight ultimately. We took all the damage on turn one, but then we stopped taking damage. I wish I knew that I was going to need this Entrench later. We've already got a Headbutt. We can add a Barricade or Calipers Relic. Entrench could be a way to go very silly, even with Joker. But it's far too early. Not very useful, especially unupgraded. Two energy to double our blocks, just not enough. And now, Bird Nerds. Also my face.
Ah. There's some block cards. Second win, further it gets rid of non-attack cards. Or Flame Barrier is a lot of block for one card and stacks return damage with our bronze scales for extra spice. I just love the sound effect of both of those things going off at the same time. Give me that. All right, we've made it to the shop. And there is a Dolly's Mirror, which could let us duplicate any card in the deck. Hmm. I wouldn't really say there's anything we're duplicating here. That's pretty sad. D -d Double form. Even if it was a demon form plus, I really wouldn't duplicate it. I could maybe dupe the inflame plus, but I wouldn't say it's particularly good. Which makes me just want to remove a card here and do nothing else. Definitely not going to be taking a searing blow. Don't think secret weapon's very good. Don't think metallicize is very good. Potions are an option, but the potions for sale are pretty sad as well. That elite could be a problem for us, huh? Eh, we'll be fine. Let's lose one of these strikes. Be on our merry way. Dramatic entrance ever a pick? Not, not here for us. If you've got dead branch, it certainly could be. If you've got extra draws on turn one, it certainly could be. But with only five draws on our turn one, we don't want to be drawing a zero cost attack with some of that energy. It won't even do that much damage without our strength. I mean, we're at exactly 38 health. And I have elites to fight. It just seems correct to accept the apparitions here. And there's a couple reasons I really like this. One, apparitions are one of the best ways to block with a Velvet Choker. Block an entire turn of damage for one card. Two, we have Centennial Puzzle, so taking a small amount of damage helps us draw cards. And three, being intangible buys us turns for Demon Form to do its dirty work. I'll do that. And a long line of hidden figures offer me a Ritual Dagger as well, which scales permanently when it kills something. Uh, that I'm not going to take, because I don't think we're going to realistically be able to make the Ritual Dagger work. It's like 50 bucks instead. All right, I took Apparition so that I could take this Elite fight without worrying at all. We'll see if that actually ends up being true. We fight the Three Slavers. Those stinky triad of troublemakers. And I'm going to deliberately let them hit me on turn one so that I get more draws for turn two. Do I headbutt the cleave? I think so. I think so. I'm going to be weakened. Hopefully this still kills the Red Slaver. 8-6. Oh, he'll die to the Thorns, which will apply the Vulnerable to us. That's bad. But at least he won't be there next turn. If I wanted to delete one of these cards, I don't think that I do. Twenty-six versus forty. Double tap bash deals eight plus twelve, twenty. Twenty-nine. Thirty-eight plus the thorn. So we can kill the middle guy. Uh, or we can kill the front one now, but that won't matter. Get these wounds to stop. is the more dangerous of the two. Okay, 
Successfully survived the vulnerable. Successfully won the fight. Beautiful. That wasn't too bad. Thanks to the apparitions. Get a blue candle letting us play curse cards. And an armaments, a second wind, or a bloodletting. Bloodletting, a centennial puzzle, kind of interesting, but less so with the... Um, Velvet Choker. Hey, Triatomic Light, hello and welcome. Thinking armaments here. Maybe armaments will be the one card we upgrade for now, and then we can try to use it to upgrade other things. Keep apparitions, upgrade true grit, so on and so forth. I'm gonna do that. So we'll upgrade armaments, and then we'll toke pretty much thereafter. Sounds good to me. Could opt for more elites here, but we won't be able to open the chest, as aforementioned. We'll get more removals if I go this way. So we're taking not quite maximum risk, but ideally maximum value path through here. All right, looks like this will hurt a little bit. Can't kill the middle one. Six cross eight. Still Chaos sadly doesn't let you cheat the Velvet Choker, so it's a pretty bad potion in our circumstance, but could still be useful if we need particularly the top card or something. Not gonna take any unupgraded common attacks here. Alright, this will open because we can immediately remove the curse. If we don't like the relic, we'll take the blue key. If we love the relic, we'll keep it. 10 max HP going to 47 from 37. I'm gonna go ahead and take that. That sounds real nice, actually. We could toke the decay, or we could keep it. We'll toke it. Hmm. I actually like taking exactly one here. don't want to add any more garbage to the draw pile, so I'm not going to play the defend. I'll just take one more. Won't be intangible next turn, so we need to probably kill Chosen next turn, which means I should only play one skill here, which is going to be True Grit. Got it. Right, this hand will kill next turn. Bash, Sever Soul, Headbutt. Yeah, that should be fine. Cool. All right, I'll lose that speed uh, that is still chaos for this duplication potion. Rapture can be interesting with the blue candle, but I think Velvet Choker and blue candle are really going to dislike each other. So I won't try to do anything fancy with that. Heavy Blade's an option. Heavy Blade scales with strength a whole bunch of times. It's really good with double tap. Actually, that is pretty nice. Would be spicy with an upgrade. The armaments can give it to it. I'll take an unupgraded Heavy Blade for the first time in a very long time. Logan the Bard, thanks for 22 months. 
of support. Heck yeah. Gremlin leader, more like gremlin bleeder. There it is, upgraded double tapped heavy blade. Good power. And I can even play this Ascender's Bane too, to draw cards. Let's do that. Draw me three. Ooh, now upgrade. So double tap, heavy blade, heavy blade. Hmm. Wanna pummel the leader? Can't pummel strike twice because the velvet choker will stop me. I think we do want to kill the wizard before the angry gremlin. Okay, so let's pummel here first. I could also actually deliberately play both apparitions and then don't kill either gremlin. That way the gremlin leader is forced to attack me next turn when I'll be intangible. I like that line, actually. Let's weaken the wizard. And I'll just be intangible for three turns. How about that? Actually, I don't want to be intangible for three. Let's keep one of them. Let's go intangible, intangible. Pummel strike. Headbutt the pummel strike, that is. Put the pummel strike on top. There we go. So, the leader must attack me this turn. Which I will use as an opportunity to beat them up. Can we try to kill the minions on this turn? Perfect. Hopefully resulting in a buff on this turn, or a resummon on this turn, excuse me. Forget demon form, just do the damage. Just do it. Perfect. Okay, that went smoothly. Azura Orca, thanks for two months of support. My best record for blocking on Watcher. Best recommendation, got it, not not record. Super strong offense and then get one shot late in the run. So the heart tends to be a, a really difficult uh, solve for a lot of Watcher runs. Um, I actually do recommend taking a look at the end of the previous Watcher run that we did just today uh, to get some ideas. We, we really were short on options and had to get quite creative. But in general, I recommend the power Mental Fortress, and st uh, ideally in multiple upgraded copies. So if you can stack it to 12 or even 18 block per stance change, that can really, really help for the late game. The card Talk to the Hand, which stacks a debuff that gives you block per attack plate, also a, a critical way to block against Heart, especially since it nicely counters out the Beat of Death. Wallop is really good too, if you can scale it damage-wise. Strength, by the way. Uh, but also, just lowering the damage output of enemies by either getting weakened or preventing yourself from becoming vulnerable. Getting an artifact against heart can make such a big deal, as can applying the weak status effect, either with a weak potion or the card wave of the hand. Hmm. We want a ride, so that we just do the blue candle thing on turn one. In exchange for a relic. I think I would keep the Writhe around if I did this. And we continue to remove strikes. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, we're more likely to get demon form down early. Let's do that. Sundial. It's probably not where it's at, but it does put us one relic deeper into the pool, at least. And like I said, the Rive might be a good thing, because it's going to guarantee that our turn one is essentially two cards bigger. We lose one to the curse, but then draw three. It's also going to cost us one hit point per combat, which is, eh, a mixed bag. It'll jump ball. Maybe do flame barrier, headbutt, flame barrier here. That's fun. Not going to, but I could. Um, I like most of these cards, though. Don't want to lose the heavy blade. Really don't. Okay, so. Actually, just go Heavy Blade True Grid. There we go. Perfect. It's a bit of an ouch. Still haven't drawn any of the intangible, though. That's probably good. Might want to consider using one of our potions in this fight, depending on how the draws line up here for us. Our plan is mainly to get Demon Form in play and then just double tap Heavy Blade to kill the champ. I think that's actually a fine plan. I want to upgrade this Heavy Blade. Turn of Intangible, we should be fine. Perfect. Upgrade the True Grit too, which is quite nice. Although I see Champ is going for a Metellus Eyes. Smart, smart Champ. Very smart Champ. Delete Bash, that'd be a weird choice. 241, still above half health. Next turn could be pretty spooky, actually. I can always liquid memories a block card if I have to. We're barely gonna survive. It's fine. It's totally fine. Although I think we might need to Liquid Memories the Heavy Blade this turn. And double tap it to, to really put the big bonk on champ here. We have 10 strength, so it'll be 64 base damage. Oh yeah, that's going to hit him really hard. And then we have two more turns to kill him, which should be very manageable. Okay, let's do that. We get to keep the dupe pot then. better than Cleave here. And we have only one more card we can play. Which I guess might as well be Defend here. Still fine. Bonk. Bonk. All right. We've skirted through. We've crushed the fool. And even though it's pretty tough with Velvet Choker, I'm still going to take an Exhume here, because Exhume allows us to get another Apparition and be intangible for one turn longer. Which is uh, definitely helpful. Being fired to delete a bunch of cards and do a bunch of damage could also be quite nice. But I don't think it's as nice as essentially getting us another turn to work with. And... Man, is that a good Runic Pyramid. No longer discard your hand at the end of your turn. 
That's going to let us, once we upgrade apparitions with uh, either rest sites or the armaments, then we get to keep them for the turn they are most impactful. It also makes our starting blue candle centennial puzzle even better, because we get to essentially have a seven card opening hand with runic pyramid. Certainly we don't need more energy per turn, so I'm not going to go for a mark of pain. There's maybe an argument for calling bell. Three more relics, but one more unremovable this time, curse. And remember, that curse that you play counts as one of your six for the turn. I'll be taking a pyramid here, thank you. So, we still need a plan for surviving the late game. Our apparitions are going to buy us some time, but they won't be enough on their own. We'd like to pair it with something like a Reaper, or a Barricade and Entrench, or something. Surely something. We really don't even have a whole lot of ways to gain block at the moment. But what we do have is ready access to card removals. And a desire for more relics. So we got that going for us. I could easily take 999 gold here. I could. I like this start. And spend our money here. If we like what we see, we can turn it into good value. If we don't, we have another shop we could visit, or even potentially remove two cards at two shops. Still very valuable. Still very, very valuable. And no, we don't have to take the one damage per fight if we think we can do the fight without it. This is definitely a fight where I think that's the case. Using this either way. Oh, fine. Any line that plays the demon form also takes at least one. So let's take one here. Let's go demon form flame barrier. This deck might actually want two Heavy Blades. Although both being unupgraded is pretty stinky. Let's do it. Let's try it out. There's Entrench again. Strange Spoon? Ugh. I think this might be that shop I mentioned that I go to another shop because I dislike it so much. Wait, Spoon Apparitions, what am I talking about? Strange Spoon with Apparitions. It's going to be really ugly with a blue candle, but this says cards that exhaust when played will instead discard half the time. There's no way I turn that down. We get to keep these half the time, and the, we can sometimes keep the Exhum, which means we can turn this currently four turns of Intangible into a lot more than that. Seven or eight, like, on average. That's cool. Is it worth removing the writhe with the spoon? Well, even if the even if the writhe doesn't get exhausted, it'll still draw us the cards, so I think it's still worth keeping. Uppercut might be worth adding to the deck as well, although I won't be able to reasonably upgrade it. With except with armaments. Do like uppercut. Okay, I'll take Uppercut, and I'll take a Strike Remove. Battle Trance, somewhat interesting, but a little too expensive at the moment, and 
a bit awkward with the Joker. We lose either True Grit Demon Form or the Sever Soul Plus. Interesting. I don't mind losing Sever Soul. Now that I have Apparitions and Runic Pyramid, I don't actually want to delete all non-attack cards, necessarily. Counted as yet another removal. I'll take it. All right, from here, what are we doing? We could go three elites, two fires, or, oh, four fires and one elite. Hmm. Hmm. What kind of any mixture thereof? I think I'm okay keeping the remaining defends. They're not great, but they're fine. So we just want to remove one more strike. It means we should probably focus on upgrading a few things, like uh, an apparition or two. Or we should just go for more elite fights. That's the other conclusion we could arrive at. Hmm. Are we going to reliably win the elite fights? Let's find out together. I'd like to be able to opt out of the middle one. Okay, let's go here first. Glowing Tesseract. We don't have a lot of health to trade. However, with Strange Spoon, colorless cards could be amazing, especially Apotheosis. But also Secret Technique. Secret Technique. Or Healing Bandage Up. Yeah, I'll take a Bandage Up. That's funny. Give me that. I think one secret technique, two would be too many because of the Velvet Choker. What about Blind? Blind is also pretty good. Okay, I'll take secret technique and Blind. Here's where we want to play Writhe, because it's a nasty turn otherwise. Still is. Do I double tap that pummel? That would leave me with only two cards left. That's fine. One. Two. Probably requires me to exhume an apparition this turn. Let's see a reasonable other way out of this. Spoon. I implore you to reconsider. Would have been nice to get more health out of this fight, but that's not how the cards lined up. That's okay. Second Headbutt. Second Headbutt's pretty good with the Strange Spoon, allowing us to put uh, cards that we kept back on top repeatedly. I'll take one more of these. All right, first Elite. It is the Repto Mancer. Who is so terrifying. So yeah, we kept the uh, ride there. But that's okay. I can Secret Technique for Armaments, upgrade this Apparition, keep it for next turn, and then even Headbutt the Armaments. Let's do that. Or I could have Headbutt the Secret Technique, but I already have one Apparition, so I don't need to do that. 
Blind makes them both sick, so we can go blind and defend. Armament's apparition is a perfect block. Actually, let's do True Grit. Forget Bash for the moment. Play Pommel Strike. Use this one. Note that the bottom daggers end up dying when they attack the second time. Likewise, these two daggers will die upon their second attack. So we go Apparition, which we kept. True Grit, get rid of this strike. Bash the Repto, headbutt the Apparition. Yes, good. That's what I want to see. Fortunately, the wounds will pile up, so I'm unlikely to be able to draw the bandage up too many times. It's okay. Very well. So I could kill Reptomancer here, but what I'd like to do... is headbutt the bandage up and play it one more time. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Well, we still gained health from Reptomancer. That's pretty sweet. Another headbutt. This one's upgraded. Nah. Sword Boomerang, though? With two heavy blades, I think we're fine. Pugsabub says, with Spoon, do we now have enough defense to handle the late game? Maybe. I think this oddly smooth stone does help a little bit, helping us block the beat of death. We're getting closer. We're almost there. Maybe feel no pain off the power potion could help. I'll get a fresher power potion. Want to make sure the corruption floats to the top. Corruption Spoon would be so good. By the way. Not too afraid of this fight. Thorns are inconsequential when you're intangible. Although, that's not inconsequential. have any apparitions I can exhume. What a fun problem. So I'll exhume this for now. There we go.
There's a block card. Full health. Dual wield lets us make copies of a power or attack. Unfortunately, not copies of Apparition or Exume or anything like that. But making copies of Inflame or maybe the Demon Form could be okay. I think we'd probably rather just use the Duke Pot if we need more Demon Forms. Well, I think continuing to fight Elites is going very well. Do have to remember that we need to open this chest, but with the blue candle, I don't think any curse will be really a problem for us. And we can toke it pretty soon afterwards. So we're fine, we're fine. Next up, the Giant Head. Testing our sort of racing ability. Giant Head should be no problem with apparitions. I'll lose one of these. Gotta make sure we're playing enough cards each turn so that we can afford to draw new cards. Not always easy. Double headbutt. Headbutt. Double tap. Two grip. Double. Heavy blared. Now I'm a ghost. The spoon. We just kept all three apparitions. That's illegal. Excuse me, sir, that's illegal. Why are you still here? Huh? Why are you still here? That's what I thought. Eternal Feather for more healing. I'd be really happy with that if we hadn't already picked up the uh, bandage up. Yet another power potion. Keep it fresh. We have to open this to get the blue key. Skipping here would be fatal to our run. Get shame. The sapphire key. Two time champion two. Thanks for four months of support. Keep on keeping on, friend. Might as well. Chance to keep it if we use it, after all. If I hit with Heavy Blade, there's a chance we get cursed again. I'd rather just be status here. Spoon. I can't exhume them because they haven't they haven't gone. Which is actually kind of how worse here now. Terrifying. 10 by 3, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Problems. Problems abound. You're already weakened, so uppercut further won't further reduce that. So we either take a ton of damage. Actually, that's fine, because we have bandage up. Okay. Let's not risk anything unnecessarily here. Take 14. Spoon. It's 
spoon. Hmm, gonna be hard to do better than this, though. That's okay. Knowing when to end your turn against this foe is kind of essential. If you push yourself too far, you'll just end up taking more damage. And that's no good for anybody. Both the exhume and the bandage up were restored. It's pretty funny. And just like that, we're back to full. Fourteen block with ethereal. Spoon can't save ethereal things, but I do like how much block that is. Spoon a Matrix reference? It could be. I mean, this one in the Matrix is a reference itself to the art of spoon bending, which is like a, a real thing people have tried to convince themselves that they can do. But nobody leveled up enough to actually succeed. I don't think I'm going to take that ghostly armor. I think we might be able to rely almost entirely on our apparitions. It's a real fake thing, that's right. Chat gets it. They understand. I'll take that back. Just in case I need it. Lock for you, nerd. Italicize, not worth it. Definitely not worth it for perfected strike or anger either. Let's just take our last elite, two remove, uh, well, one recall, one removal, and one event. The Repto rematch. This time we draw a shame. How shameful. Guess we might as well play Apparition. This is not the greatest turn one, I'll tell you that. I get to keep it. Can't kill either dagger before it adds the wound. I should probably play at least one card just to make a room in hand though. All right, to avoid a worst case scenario, let's damage one of these daggers. That way I can survive next turn if necessary. I think I'll keep the blind in my hand. Okay, we did draw Exhum, which means we can get back the Apparition, thankfully. So it's actually quite good, very important, that this was not lost. Could also double tap the Cleave, and that would actually kill every dagger except this one. But there's still the Reptomancer's attack that I can't deal with, so might as well be intangible, I imagine. Although I could be intangible and double tap the cleave. There's nothing saying I can't do both. I think what I'd prefer to do is be intangible and play demon form. Although there's definitely something to be said for drawing a bunch of cards for next turn. If I don't make room in hand, we're going to have a problem. Kept the exhume, but not the apparition. Completely okay with that. Three energy. 
So I can play Demon Form Blind Writhe to make room in hand? That'll work. Let me get a turn off from the Reptos attacking. Good. Need to secret technique armaments so I can double tap cleave plus, otherwise it won't kill them. It's fine by me. Should have been uppercut before double tap. But if I did double tap, then uppercut, then cleave, we only would have played one cleave and we would have died. So I'll call that my bad. Missed down some damage on Repto there, but it shouldn't matter too much. Shouldn't matter too much at all. Actually could have killed her there, but we can do better. Spoon. Get Ink Bottle, providing just a little bit more card draw. An Offering could provide more energy in card draw, but what need have we of Offering with the... I mean, it's only one hit point, right? Alright, I'll do it. With Spoon, too? Yeah. It's, it's gonna have some use to it. 275 gold if I'm willing to take one more curse? I'm not. Nice try, though. Alright, our first boss will be the Awakened One. Gaining strength for every power we play. That's more like it. Guess we'll play this. Demon Form Turn 1 definitely seems like the approach to this fight. Shouldn't have to play any other powers. Although, if we run out of apparitions too early, we could get into trouble here. Already lost two. We still have Exhum and one more. So we must be careful. our last intangible turn for, for uh, the next little bit here. Look at that. All three gone. Spooky. Here we need to gain control of the situation. We need to ensure we're consistently drawing a hand that can block against the Awakened One. That shouldn't be too bad. We'll go blind, defend True Grit. True Grit hits at Exhum, that'd be pretty bad. Anything I can do about that, though. Play Uppercut as well? Yes. Offering gone is fine. Let's headbutt. Card we want to be upgraded. The True Grit. Here we go. With Defend and True Grit upgraded, we're going to be in better shape here. We can start deleting the strikes. And all that.
the jumps. So we still want True Grid a lot. No headbutts in hand, though. Got it. I found the headbutts. Unupgraded skills into my hand. We'll use secret technique to get armaments. Upgrade these three. Oh, wait, but I should have drawn one first. Ah! Foolish. I needed to play the riot there. Oh, well, this is fine. worked out. up, Donu and Deco, the Shapes Brothers. Or sisters. Never really been clear. Let's just call them non-identical twins. Getting armaments now seems pretty reasonable. Okay, there's our demon form. Gonna have to take some damage to get it in play. That's okay. We'll get to heal to full after this fight anyway, so as long as we win this fight, it doesn't matter how much health we have or don't have when it's all over. Yet I still feel compelled to get that health back. Just seems to be how it be. have taken care to set up ink bottle a little bit more but i'm pretty comfortable going into the elites of act four here with our 47 hit points we've also got enough money to buy potentially a relic of the shop as well as one last card removal here i'm getting rid of our remaining strike and we could actually buy one more remove at the shop as well or we could upgrade a key card like the demon form to make sure that this is always upgraded and then buy the removal of the shop. Hmm. 
They're just co-workers. You know, I hadn't considered that angle. Badumch. I'm gonna upgrade this demon for him. So why not remove the curse? Because that curse is still giving us bonus draw on turn one if we play it. Which is pretty dang powerful. Also pretty dang powerful is corruption. All of our skills would be free. And we exhaust those skills, but it's subject to the same 50% keep chance with a strange spoon. So corruption basically just makes all my skills free, which is pretty sweet. And they still stick around half the time. A little unsatisfactory with a six card limit, but it's still useful, given that we have two cost attacks like Heavy Blade and Uppercut. The additional strength from Brimstone could actually be a huge deal. Since our main survival strategy is from being intangible with apparitions, what if we just had more strength every turn? And then we ended the fight more quickly. Maybe that would be the best choice of all. I actually quite like that. The extra strength per turn will make these heavy blades so much more deadly, so much more quickly. Let's do it. Let's take a brimstone. Every turn, we gain two strength, all enemies gain one. The question is, do I take liquid memories over a power potion? I think so. Because you can't exhume something in the discard pile, but you can liquid memories it. Let's lose this power potion. Alright, I like where we're at. Gain thee some strength, foul beast. I will be intangible. So that you may suffer. Still intangible. Still going to be intangible for the foreseeable future. And that two strength per turn. If Otherwise, if, having not seen in flame or demon form yet, I'd be terrified if this were not uh, having just picked Brimstone here. I was terrified. Five damage. Bonk. Get a lizard tail, bringing us back to life one time if we should die. And we're offered a Dark Embrace Plus, which draws us a card whenever a card is exhausted. Which may or may not be actually useful? Deeply unclear. The lizard tail is great, though. That lets us survive a, a non multi hit, one of the big attacks, without having to use an apparition could be very valuable. Dark Embrace is a little awkward with a spoon, it's true. I like it with the ethereal cards in the deck, though. But there's a chance we'll be hand-clogged anyway. So I'm not... I'm not thrilled by it. I'm gonna skip it, keep the current potions, and head forth into the hearts. Almost am I tempted to 
leave things as they are. We need to play some cards this turn, though. And if I might draw an apparition, thankfully I did not. Not gonna play Offering. I think it's Inflame, then True Grit. And then consider from what's left. Okay, we lose Bash, that's fine. Let's just get this out of my hand. That's not a particularly good turn one, but it is acceptable, because at least we're not losing apparitions. Double tap bash might have been good there. Might have. Would have cost us a lot of health to do if I would not played the true grit first, though. I think we'll just keep the double tap. And the headbutt bow. 6 by 15, show me an apparition. All right, offering. I need you to save me. Can also get secret technique. All right, we're good. Do I want a secret technique for armaments? Upgrading flame barrier is pretty nice. Could dupe pot this apparition. Although I think with unupgraded ones in the draw pile, actually, and I can hit with the um, armaments as well. Okay, I will do that. That's right, and ink bottle. So I'd like to draw one more card. That's fine. Should have played this earlier. We headbutt the armaments. Let's do 135 damage back to the heart. Which is kind of a big deal. So I could choose to use the Lizard Tail here. Interesting seeing the heart attack for 72. That's a weird number. Still haven't seen Demon Form, which again makes me really glad we bought the Brimstone. Zoom is in my hand. I think we're fine to use this apparition. But don't use the armaments, because I want to be able to keep stuff. So I'll take one damage. This one we keep, and then we can duplicate it next turn. Line doesn't matter, but it does make room in hand, so I'll do it. Be a reasonable time to Liquid Memories Heavy Blade just to get some more damage in this turn. Yeah, we should do that. And then we just cap out where we can.
as you manage up. Be free, my fair lizard tail friend. Be free. And GG. Kabonk. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.